Welcome everyone. I cannot believe we've made it to our final week in remote learning. It has definitely been a story for the books. Today is Monday, December 14th, 2020, and this is Ms. Phillips bringing you your reading workshop lesson for the day. The materials that you will need for this lesson are your pencil, the student copy of Christo and Jean-Claude, which is your My Book, pay, Book 2, pages 18 through 30. I went ahead and linked the student copy in the framework for you because you do not have your My Book number 2 with you at the moment. And you're going to want to use your reading journal as well today. If you don't have these supplies, go ahead and pause the video to collect them. Then come back to press play. Okay, now that you have everything you need, let's go over our object objectives. I will explain the synthesizing strategy. We will synthesize and make inferences while reading the text, and you will synthesize and make inferences to find a deeper understanding of the text. Readers, authors sometimes will state thoughts or ideas directly, while other times they will imply or suggest them and expect readers to make an inference. An inference is an educated guess. When readers make inferences, they combine their own knowledge and experiences with evidence from the text to figure out what an author wants them to know. Making an inference is like reading between the lines. When reading, a good frame to follow would be, there seems to be a piece of information missing here, but based on blank and blank, I can infer that blank. As you read, you should use text evidence and prior knowledge and experiences to better understand the text. Today you will be practicing making inferences when you read Christo and Jean-Claude. I want you to turn to page 18 and 19 in your student hand, handout copy. Today we'll be, be we will be reading an informational text titled Christo and Jean-Claude. Informational text give facts and examples about a topic. Authors of informational text may organize their ideas using main ideas with key details, including facts and quotations. Informational text may include visuals such as photographs, Informational texts even include text features such as headings and captions. Some information may be shown in bulleted lists. It's always a good practice to set a purpose for your reading. Think about the title and genre of this text. What do you know about visual artists? What do you want to learn? Take some time now to pause the video and write your ideas to these questions in the set a purpose bubble on page 18 in your student handout or in your reading journal. Okay, welcome back. Look through the pages of this text. Notice the pictures and the headings and quotations. Think, what do you think this selection will be about. When you ask yourselves questions like the three we've discussed, you're giving yourself a purpose for reading. You want your intent to read to be meaningful. Follow along as I read the text. I'm going to start on page 20. The Gates, Central Park, New York City, 1979 to 2005. We have never done a sad work. Christo. Most human beings are afraid of what is new. It is our work to convince them that they will enjoy it, and even if they don't, to allow us just for 16 days to create a work of art. Jean-Claude. In the winter of 2005, Christo and Jean-Claude became two of the most visible artists in the world, gracing the covers of magazines from New York to Japan. What had riveted the world's attention? The Gates, Central Park, 
New York City, 1979 to 2005, the largest work of art ever created for the largest of all American cities was about to be completed with great fanfare. 7,503 shimmering saffron panels would be unfurled in New York's Central Park. Would the gates cause celebration or controversy? Back in 1979, what were the chances of Christo and Jean-Claude constructing a giant artwork stretching 23 miles through Central Park? After all, Central Park is a New Yorker's big back backyard. The place where they run, bike, walk dogs, play ball, skate, and even take rides in horse-drawn carriages. It has acres of green grass, thousands of stately trees, long curving paths, a lake, ponds, fountains, a castle, a zoo, sculptures, and a merry-go-round. The mayor was skeptical of the artist's proposal. Some environmentalists worried about it damaging the park's trees, plants, and wildlife. In 1981, the park's commissioner published a 185-page book saying no. I will think out loud about what I've learned in these opening paragraphs so that you can follow along with my thinking. So pay close attention. First, I learned that the Gates is a massive work of art. The author says that it was the largest work of art to ever appear in New York. Then I also learned that it was placed in a park that New Yorkers use a lot and that it was controversial. Based on this information, I can infer that the selection will be about overcoming difficulties to have the artwork installed. I think this selection will also tell about the scale of the work that went into creating and installing it. Let's continue reading to find out what I'm if what I'm inferring is correct or on the right track. Look at the drawing on page 21 in your handout. Based on this drawing here, why do you think Christo named his artwork The Gates? Think about that for a few seconds and write down your thoughts on, on the page or in your reading journal. Okay, now that you've written down your thoughts, I want to hear I want you to hear my thinking. Take a look at the drapes and the poles holding them up. Imagine yourself passing through these with wouldn't you be wouldn't you think it would feel like passing through gates into another place? Am I right? What do you think? Let's continue. But Christo and John Claude never gave up easily. All of their grand scale outdoor works of art are the result of countless meetings with countless people over long periods of time. Talking to the public about their concerns is part of the artistic process and issues from the environment to safety and the use of the site are incorporated into the work. Getting a yes took energy, persistence, and 26 years. Finally, in 2003, the artist signed a 43-page contract with the city, allowing the gates to go forward. The long wait was over. On February 12, 2005, Christo and Jean-Claude would transform Central Park into one huge work of art. Who would pay for such an ambitious undertaking? The artist accepted neither sponsors nor public money. All outdoor projects are financed by the sale of Christo's indoor artworks, including collages, drawings, scale models, and of some early works. For months, Christo holed up in his studio, often spending 15 hours a day making preparatory drawings. Downstairs, Jean-Claude fielded the telephone calls and organized thousands of details. As creative partners, the artists worked together in a whirlwind activity. Usually, an artist labors in the studio and exhibits a finished artwork in a museum or gallery, but the gates would be erected in Central Park while the whole world watched. When I say go, I want you to pause this lesson to read page on page 23, paragraph 7. 
You're going to read paragraph 7 and then answer the following question in your reading journal or on the handout. Why did the author Why did the author describe the boxes as mysterious looking? Pause now to do this. Okay, now that you've answered this question on your own, I want you to go ahead and keep reading. Continue reading from page 24 through 30 in your student handout. Then complete the selection quiz that is linked into the framework for today.